Hey guys, Buildzoid here from the Actually Hardcore Overclocking channel, and today we are going to be doing the AM4 motherboard roundup for the end of 2020. We will be covering ATX, MATX, and ITX boards, um, also in that order. And before we get into it, um, I'd like to point out that I'm not factoring in the current state of the BIOSes for the motherboards in the list, because uh, the BIOSes right now are a bit of a mess, because new CPU launched, AMD is messing around with the AGSA, which basically means AMD is making a mess of the AGSA, and by extension making a mess of the BIOSes. So there are bugs like USB port issues, memory overclocking issues, which includes XMP issues, uh, Infinity Fabric Stability Issues, I'm surprised I've not yet heard about a sleep bug, but I'm sure that's gonna show up eventually. So just generally the BIOSes are a bit buggy right now. Basically all motherboard vendors are ex affected to some extent, because this is like mostly coming from the AMD AGSA and everybody uses the same AGSA. Before that, this video is brought to you by EK Water Blocks and it's RTX 30 series vector water blocks. EK Quantum Vector Blocks include options for Founders Edition 3080 and 3090 cooling, Asus Tough and Strix 3080 blocks, EVGA XC3 and FTW3 blocks, and more. EK has Blackout, Acrylic, and RGB blocks available, including new Special Edition blocks with minimalistic aesthetics. Learn more at the link in the description below. So I'm not factoring in the current state of the BIOSes because hopefully in like a week, maybe two, worst case scenario, a couple months, uh, AMD will finally, you know, stop messing up the AGSA and we'll have stable BIOSes. But uh, for now, um, yeah, they're not exactly finished. Um, the other thing I'm not factoring in is any sales that are going on for the motherboards. The list is mostly going by MSRP because there was quite a few boards that I saw that were on very deep discounts for like 24 hours, which, you know, the, the video would lose its relevance very, very quickly if I, if I was like considering, you know, motherboards that are currently on sale. So, yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting off with what I consider the baseline uh, AM4 motherboard, just in general right now, and that is the MSI B550A-A uh, Pro. The reason why I consider this the baseline motherboard is because it basically does a little bit of everything. You've got troubleshooting LEDs, you've got an internal Type-C connector, you've got six SATA ports, two M.2 slots, the second one is PCIe 3.0, the first one is 4.0, um, you get your, you know, 16x 4.0 PCIe slot from the CPU, and then you've got the second PCIe 4, uh, 4x slot from the chipset that runs at 3.0. Um, you've got a VRM fully capable of PBOing a 5950x, and for the rear I/O, you've got BIOS flashback functionality, so you can update the motherboard BIOS without having a compatible CPU. Um, you've got, you know, a decent number of USB ports, one gig Realtek LAN. Uh, you've got a, you know, Type-C port in the rear I.O. as well. So basically, this does everything a motherboard should do. Um, the only real, like, well, it's not even a real complaint, because at this price point, you just don't have motherboards that do this better. But the only potential issue you might run into with this motherboard is that it does use a four-layer PCB. And so when it comes to memory overclocking, it's just not as good as some of the more expensive boards. And if you're just running two memory sticks, this won't really affect you at all. If you're running four memory sticks, then you might find that instead of being able to take your four memory sticks all the way up to like 4000, DDR4 4000 speeds, you'll be stuck in sort of the 3600 range. Um, well, more like you'll be stuck at 3600 or slightly above 3600. You won't be able to go all the way up to 4000, you know, and I don't really consider that a huge deal because if your goal is to just run an XMP memory, then that's fine. It doesn't matter um, that you're stuck at 3600 <laughs> um, because if, you're, if your goal is to go above 3600, you have to start manually setting the FCLK and there's probably a good chance that your CPU won't be stable if you raise the FCLK too high. Like at that point, you're basically memory overclocking. You're just not bothering with the important part of it. So, um, which would be the memory timings. So, you know, I don't really consider that a massive flaw on a motherboard like this. And if you're on two memory sticks, you're fine. So, you know, if you want a higher capacity, just run 2x16 instead of 4x8. If you're doing a Ryzen build right now, this is the motherboard I would look at. And if you don't like the price point, wait until we get to the MATX part of the video, because we're going to cover some cheaper boards in the MATX section. Um, and if you don't like the feature set, well, then consider some of the more expensive boards that we're going to go over next. 
So, next up we've got the B550 AORUS Pro V2. In terms of overall feature set, this is very similar to the A, uh, A Pro from MSI, right? You've still got six SATA ports, though you do get a Thunder, like Thunderbolt header over there. There's an internal Type-C port. Um, you still have troubleshooting LEDs, and you get an extra PCIe X4 slot from the chipset. So you don't really get, you know, anything like that. That's like the biggest extra connector that you get along with the Thunderbolt header. So if you wanted to get a Thunderbolt add-in card, you can for this board. Um, you get a better VRM. This is a 12 power stage uh, VRM using 50 amp power stages, whereas this this uses discrete MOSFETs. Um, so in terms of like, you can actually properly overclock a 5950X on this. Also, this uses a six layer PCB with a updated memory topology. This thing is really good at memory overclocking. Um, going up to DDR4-5000 uh, on two memory sticks is no problem. And on four memory sticks, you should have no problem. Like actually this topology, if you're gonna run like four by 32, can go all the way up to like 4,000, if maybe a little bit higher than that, depending on your CPU, or maybe a bit lower, you know? So like, I don't know how my CPU compares to the like worst case scenario 5950X, but um, yeah, so the memory overclocking support on a motherboard like this is actually really, re on, on this motherboard is really, really solid. And uh, you also get somewhat more stuff in the rear I.O. You get two and a half gig LAN um, from Realtek and Q Flash, which is Gigabyte's version of BIOS Flashback. And you get more USB ports, which I'm a big fan of. So, yeah, and this board's $180, most of the, like, it's $180-ish, right? Sometimes it's on sale, some places it's more expensive, but it should be around 180 and I, I really like this board. If I consider like what I do with my personal system, like I would probably go for a board like this because just getting a more expensive board than this just doesn't make sense to me. Like mostly you're just getting extra SATA ports or extra M.2 slots. You don't really see any massive noteworthy upgrades going with more expensive boards than this. Yeah, it really depends on your needs, but I think this is kind of the, like as an overclocker, I consider this the sweet spot motherboard. Um, anyway, Let's move on to the first of the X570 boards, the Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi from Asus. There is a non-Wi-Fi version of this board as well. Now, the reason you would consider this motherboard is because it comes with eight SATA ports, which is just not something you can have on a B550 board. B550 boards only go up to six, this has eight. So if you need a lot of SATA ports, this is a motherboard for you. If you want two M.2 slots, both of which are PCIe 4.0, um, this is also a motherboard for you. Uh, if you want great memory overclocking, the B550 AORUS Pro is better um, because this is on a newer memory topology than this is. This is still a six layer PCB, so it's still gonna clock memory better than the uh, A Pro, but it's not gonna be as good as the B550 AORUS Pro. So yeah, VRM wise, it's also very similar to what the AORUS Pro V2 has. So, you know, CPU overclocking is not gonna really be any better on this either. Um, you do get color-coded troubleshooting LEDs, but you don't get an internal Type-C header. And for the rear I.O., you get somewhat less USB ports. Um, you get only one gig Realtek LAN, but you do get Wi-Fi 5. So if you want Wi-Fi, well, you should probably consider a B550 motherboard with Wi-Fi instead, because that's going to be a cheaper way of getting Wi-Fi. Like, the main reason this motherboard is on the list is for those people who just want a bunch of SATA ports or, um, you know, dual M.2 slots that are PCIe 4.0. Because um, other than that, this board really doesn't do anything better than the AORUS Pro, as far as I'm concerned, at least. Um, oh, I guess you get Wi-Fi as well. So, yeah, anyway, moving on. Uh, now we get a motherboard where, you know, we take the connectivity options to the limit. Like, now we've really maxed out what the chipset is capable of doing. The X570 Tai Chi, this thing is 200... Oh, I think I forgot to mention, this is around $190, so it's also not that much. It's not that different. In, well, this tends to go on sale for less than 190 a lot of the time, but MSRP is 190 um, Anyway, this right here is the X570 Tai Chi. It's $270, and uh, the whole reason you'd get this board, again, it's not because of the overclocking, because especially in the memory department, the Aorus Pro is just going to beat the Tai Chi by kind of a lot. Um, I almost said wipe the floor, but it's not quite that bad. That would be more like Aorus Pro versus cheap four-layer motherboard, not, you know, um, kind of expensive six-layer. But the thing is, this is on the older 
it is on an older memory topology, so this just doesn't clock memory as well as some of the newer boards. But you do get a postcode power button, reset button, clear CMOS, so, you know, um, you'll know, ex like, the board will tell you that your memory settings are bad, <laughs> and what exactly is wrong with them, but you won't be able to do much about it. Um, anyway, the reason this gets onto the list is you get eight SATA ports again, you get an internal Type-C header, but you get three M.2 uh, PCIe 4.0 slots, and... Uh, which, incidentally, you can't use all of the M.2 slots at the same time as all of the SATA ports. Um, so it's one or the other. You can't have both at the same time. You do also get two PCIe slots running X8 connected to the CPU, which means the motherboard supports SLI, which isn't really that useful these days. But it also means if for whatever reason you just need an X8 slot, let's say you want to run five M.2 SSDs, well, you could buy a PCIe to M.2 adapter card, plug it into that second PCIe slot, and now you've got the option to run five M.2 SSDs. On other motherboards, you'd have to give up your primary PCIe slot for that, because the the AM4 platform doesn't actually have that many PCIe lanes available, or like any other card that you can't run it through the chipset, it has to be connected to the CPU, well, this motherboard is for that. And unfortunately, getting a motherboard with two X8 PCIe slots, really, it doesn't get cheaper than 250-ish dollars. The cheapest motherboard with dual X8 slots is actually like compromised in sort of a bunch of other ways. So that's why this gets onto the list. This is just the most flexible. You get, you know, a bunch of M.2 slots, a bunch of SATA ports, you get um, the as, about as much PCIe flexibility as you're going to get on an X or an any AM4 motherboard. Um, Solid memory overclock, like, you know, not the best memory overclocking, but it's still solid for day-to-day -day usage, it's going to be just fine. Um, solid with CPU overclocking, because again, this VRM is actually very, very similar to what you get on the Tough and the Aorus Pro, funnily enough. And then for the rear I.O., you get 1 gig LAN, Wi-Fi 6, uh, the 1 gig LAN is Intel, you get a clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, and a okay number of USB ports. Um... So yeah, th this board is primarily for people who just want SATA ports and M.2 slots and the, you know, dual PCIe, though there are other options for the dual uh, PCIe X8 slots. So yeah, this is not the only option, but this is kind of the option that does everything at the same time. Um, well, except for the part where, you know, SATA ports and M.2 slots share bandwidth, so you can't actually plug in all of them at the same time, but you certainly have the option to choose with this motherboard down the line instead of when you're buying it. So, anyway, let's get to the last ATX uh, X570 motherboard, and that's the X570 Creator. This thing's $500, and the reason this gets onto the list is very, very simple. It has 10 gig LAN, it has 1 gig LAN, and it has dual Thunderbolt 3 ports. That's basically it. You also get BIOS flashback, Wi-Fi 6, less USB ports than what I'm comfortable with. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be like, you can adapt Type-C. Like, the thing is, the only thing that uses Type-C that I have is my phone. So, to me, Type-C ports don't count as USB ports. Um, anyway, you get an internal Type-C header over there, eight SATA ports, unfortunately only two M.2 slots. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, this is also the only motherboard with this type of rear I.O. connectivity. So, I'm assuming some of, the, like, one of the M.2 slots got converted into Thunderbolt ports. Um, Anyway, you do get a postcode, power button, reset button, clear CMOS button. Same memory topology as what you get on the Tai Chi, which does mean that the Aorus Pro V2 is again going to be a better memory overclocker than the Creator. And VRM-wise, this is actually the strongest of the VRMs here, so this is a better VRM than what you get on some of the previous boards, but in terms of how that actually affects CPU overclocking, you're probably not going to notice a difference, because... The Ryzen chips, they aren't really that difficult to power, and if you're using PBO, then the VRM doesn't matter basically at all. Like, as long as the VRM doesn't overheat, it just doesn't matter what it actually is. You know, you still get SLI support on this board, so you do get the two X8 PCIe slots. Yeah, so if you're doing a, you know, workstation build and you need the 10 gig and the Thunderbolt, then this is a really solid option for that. Anyway, let's move on to the MATX motherboards. Here we have the B550M Mortar from MSI, and this gets onto the list because... Like, internally, it's a very solid motherboard. The rear I.O. is, in my opinion, not the best, but, like, what you get so sort of inside the case is great. So you've got an internal Type-C, you get troubleshooting LEDs, six SATA ports, your PCIe slots are arranged so that you can actually plug in a triple slot GPU and still use the bottom PCIe slot if you need to. Um, you get your two M.2 slots again. Second one is 3.0, because this is a B550 motherboard. Um... And you also get the strongest VRM on a MATX uh, motherboard that you can get for AM4. 
Um, so this will do a great job of overclocking even a 5950X. Now, the bad news is that this is also on a four-layer PCB. So in terms of memory overclocking, it'll be very comparable to this. That's the one downside. I can't tell if any of the MATX motherboards are six layers for the other vendors. Um, actually, no. For Gigabyte, I know for a fact they aren't. For ASRock, I know for a fact they aren't. And with Asus, I can't tell. Um, and if, if, if the Asus one is a four layer, then it's going to be comparable to this. And the Asus one doesn't really have the same sort of feature set as this. So yeah, that's why this gets onto the list. And, um, you know, if, if you're not trying to push really high memory frequencies, the, the memory topology just doesn't affect you. Anyway, moving on, we've got the B550M Aorus Pro Dash P. This thing's around $120, and do get the Dash P version. The non-P version is significantly worse in terms of the VRM. The, the Dash P is perfectly fine for use with a 5950X. The non-Dash P version is going to run really hot um, if you decide to overclock. So, yeah, that's why... And, and the thing is, like, the non-Dash P version costs the same. So there's very little reason to get that version instead, in my opinion. Anyway, um, there are some downsides to this board, because this is a whole lot of VRM attached to not a whole lot of motherboards, so there's no troubleshooting LEDs. There's no internal Type-C port. You only get four SATA ports. You do get, you know, two M.2 slots. The second one is 3.0 again. And we get the PCIe X16 slot in a location where if your GPU takes up anything more than two PCIe slots, well, you're not going to get to use that last PCIe slot, so that's very unfortunate. Effectively, you have the connectivity of an ITX board here in terms of PCIe because of this slot spacing, which is, uh, in my opinion, a bit dumb. You do get an upgrade in terms of the rear I.O., at least in my opinion, compared to the mortar. If, well, you do give up the Wi-Fi, but you do still get 2.5 gig Realtek LAN and way more USB ports, and you get Q flash in on the rear I.O. as well. So... Yeah, um, basically, as long as you don't want Wi-Fi, this is a really, really solid option. And you don't mind the, you know, less USB ports, uh, well, less SATA ports thing and the missing troubleshooting LEDs. Uh, which, like, I care about. <laughs> like, the troubleshooting LEDs are super helpful if you're doing a lot of memory overclocking. Anyway, moving on. Cheapest motherboard with PCIe 4.0, the B550M Pro 4. You would buy this board because you want to run your CPU at stock or your CPU doesn't have very many cores and you just want some connectors on your motherboard. So you've got six SATA ports, two M.2 slots, you know, PCIe 4.0 X16. The second, uh, this M.2 slot over here is 3.0, of course. Um... You get a VRM heatsink, so you can run the high core count CPUs at stock. And honestly, you can probably do a little bit of PBO as well. Just depends on your, like, case airflow setup. Um, Four-layer PCB, so the memory overclocking is going to be, you know, on par with, like, this and this and this. Um, with some differences because, you know, different motherboard vendors do use different top topologies. But ultimately, it's just, like, you're not going to see a four-layer PCB beating a six or really even being comparable to a 6. Um, so, that's kind of the thing. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. Like, technically, you could have a 6-layer PCB that just, is just, like, set up completely wrong, and then a 4-layer could beat it, but assuming a good 6-layer layout, it, it, you're not going to, you know, have a comparable comparable memory overclocking on a 4-layer. Though, ASRock can do really high frequencies, depending on which memory sticks you use. Um, and only two memory sticks. You can't use four. Um, anyway, for the rear I.O., um, you get one gig Realtek LAN, okay number of USB ports, some display outputs, not much else. So, yeah, if you just need, like, the bare minimum with PCIe 4.0 support, well, this is the bare minimum for PCIe 4.0 support. Because if you go any lower on the price, you don't get PCIe 4.0 anymore. Though I would like to point out that PCIe 4.0 doesn't make that much of a difference in terms of uh, performance for even high-end GPUs right now. Like, even an RTX 3090 doesn't really lose a bunch of performance if you use it on a 3.0 slot instead of a 4.0 slot. So, um, yeah, this is worth keeping in mind, okay? Like, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But hey, if you want the, like, primarily the PCIe 4.0 here, in my opinion, is for the M.2 slot more so than the, you know, than the X16 for GPUs. Anyway... 
cheapest board in this entire video, the A520 MA Aorus Elite. This gets onto the list for the very simple reason that you can run a stock 5950X on this. If you just want to run a stock 5950X, have one hard drive and one GPU, this is fine. Um, it still seems kind of like a weird combination of parts, but not actually that different from what you might see in inside like an OEM pre-built system, right? Where it's just like some crazy CPU on a terrible motherboard, <laughs> which this isn't even that bad. It still has a VRM heatsink. If you go any cheaper, th th those go, you know, th those stop being a thing. And um, with the high core count CPUs, that's actually a bit of an issue depending on what kind of cooling system you have for the CPU. So... Yeah, that's why this gets into the list, mostly because of the VRM heatsink. Um, other than that, you do get Q Flash, which is pretty neat for a motherboard at this price point. I'm pretty sure it's one of the very few motherboards down down in this price range where you still get Q Flash. Though Gigabyte actually has it on their entire lineup for A520 as well. Um, but for a lot of the other vendors, like you, you don't get BIOS flashback functionality at all. Uh, you do only get four SATA ports and only one M.2 slot. Um, and the rear I.O., um, well, you do get six Type A's, but there's no Type C anymore at all, anywhere on the motherboard, and you get one gig Realtek LAN. So, yeah, if you just want the bare minimum to connect, like, you're, you need to attach your CPU to some RAM and a GPU and maybe an SSD, then, you know, the, this is the bare minimum that, that'll sort of achieve it. Well, no, you could go even lower, but I wouldn't recommend it at that point. Um... So, yeah, it is worth noting that A520, the chipset, does support memory overclocking, so you can run XMP. So if you have, like, a 3600CL16 memory kit, you could totally run that on a board like this. And this does have a four-layer PCB, and I believe it actually clocks memory a bit worse than the more expensive four-layer boards, but I'm not 100% certain about that. Let's move on to the ITX boards. So here we have the ROG Strix X570i Gaming. Um, this is the most expensive AM4 ITX motherboard, but like if you're going to be overclocking a 16 core or a 12 core a lot, this one also has the best VRM of any ITX motherboard, and it comes with its own included fan. So if your case airflow isn't properly set up for cooling the VRM, well, the motherboard will ensure that it does still cool the VRM. So yeah, that's why it gets into the list. Um, other than that, it's reasonably capable in terms of memory overclocking, but the voltage controls are bad. Let's just put it that way. If you're considering this motherboard from the perspective of, I just want to overclock memory for fun, and therefore I want a motherboard with two memory slots because it's better for memory overclocking, uh, this actually loses to this. And I know that because I have a X570i Gaming, and I also have a Gigabyte motherboard that uses this memory topology. And... Yeah, like this, this is slight, like it's not a huge difference, but it is slightly worse. And also the voltage controls for the memory on this motherboard are extremely limited. Um, so I'm really not a big fan of that. But CPU overclocking on an, for an like ITX board for CPU overclocking, you're not going to find a better option. Um, also, you do get troubleshooting LEDs on this thing and they're color coded. So if you can't see them, you know, properly, you can still tell what part of the like which LED is lighting up based on the color instead of, well, like if they were all the same color, you won't be able to tell which LED lit up if you can't look directly at them. But here you can, you know, as, as long as you can see a hint of the like the color for the troubleshooting LED, well, you can tell what's wrong. So that's pretty helpful, in my opinion, especially in an ITX application. You do get also two M.2 PCIe 4.0 slots on this board because it is X570 for SATA ports, and the rear I.O. for an ITX board is actually pretty good. You get one gig Intel LAN, good number of USB ports by ITX standards, and a Wi-Fi uh, and Wi-Fi 6. So I really like this as an ITX board. Um, this one's really cool, in my opinion. So anyway, well, let's say you wanted a cheaper ITX board, and then I would go for the B550i Aorus Pro AX, because Actually, this board tends to go for two fifty to three hundred dollars. There seems to be some supply issue with it, which is why it tends to go like why it gets so expensive sometimes. Anyway, if you wanted a cheaper board, there's the B550i uh, Aorus Pro AX. This thing's one hundred and eighty dollars. It's actually a better memory overclocker um, because, like, the, this the funny thing is like the same applies to Asus. Asus has a B550i gaming motherboard, and that's also a better memory overclocker than the X570i gaming, just because the B550 one has a new memory topology, whereas the X570 has the old memory topology, so, 
yeah. Um, but the thing is, the B550i from Asus is $230, and in my opinion, very overpriced. So it's not on the list. But this is on the list, because at $180, you get a motherboard that, depending on the airflow you're running, can overclock a 5950X. PBO should certainly be fine, and manual overclocking. The, the thing is, PBO doesn't really, like, ever go over 200 watts, in my experience. You can punch in whatever limits you want, and it'll basically boost up to 200 watts. Um, even if you have the power limit set to like 250 or 300 or 500 or whatever, it'll not really want to go over 200 watts for some reason. Um, which does mean that, you know, boards like this are perfectly acceptable for PBO overclocking, even a 16 core. Um, and then the memory overclocking performance is going to be very solid. There's no troubleshooting LEDs, unfortunately. Um, you do get four SATA ports internally, and you do get a PCIe 4.0 M.2 slot and a 3.0 M.2 slot. Um... So you do still get two M.2 slots for on a night, which, you know, it's kind of a lot for an ITX board. And uh, for the rear I.O., you get less USB ports. You do still get two and a half gig Realtek LAN. Actually, you get two and a half gig Realtek LAN instead of one gig Intel, which was on the X570i Strix. And you get Wi-Fi 6, um, as well as a Q flash button. So you can, you know, BIOS flashback functionality right there, which that's not present on the Strix. So... Yeah, um, sort of a different feature set in st compared to, to the Strix board. Um, but at $180, like, this is a really solid option for, for an ITX motherboard if you're considering the higher core count CPUs. Now, let's say you just want the cheapest possible ITX motherboard. Well, I would probably go for the A520i AC. And the reason why I, I would go for the A520i AC is because... The only thing you're giving up by going with this board instead of, like, the cheapest B550 ITX board is the PCIe 4.0 support. And I guess if you want to run a PCIe 4.0 SSD, that kind of, you know, that might, like, that's actually, okay, that's a downside. But if you're not planning to run a PCIe 4.0 SSD, then, you know, this, this is fine. Um, as I mentioned before, even high-end GPUs today don't really get much of a benefit from PCIe 4.0 instead of PCIe 3.0, so that's not going to be too much of a downside. Um, and A520 can do memory overclocking, so in terms of memory overclocking, this is actually going to be a pretty solid board. And, uh, well, you can't overclock the CPU, so the VRM discussion is just a case of like, well, it'll run a stock 5950X just fine, right? And you get four SATA ports internally, and on the rear I.O., you do get Q-Flash functionality, but 1 gig Realtek LAN and, you know, no Type-C ports. Uh, also just Wi-Fi 5 instead of Wi-Fi 6. But on the cheapest B550 ITX board, by comparison to this, is basically, you lose the Q-Flash. I think you even don't have Wi-Fi. Um, and the only thing you gain, and you spend $20 more, and the only thing you gain is PCI. You don't even get a second M.2 slot. You literally just get one M.2 slot, but now it's 4.0 instead of 3.0. So, you know, it's just like, it doesn't make sense to me to go for that. This is the cheapest ITX board I would go for. Because, like, you can still run a stock 5950X on this just fine. And you can overclock your memory a lot, potentially because um, this is an ITX board with only two memory slots. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, and if you'd like to support us here at Gamers Nexus, then we've got store.gamersnexus.net where you can pick up uh, mod mats and other Gamers Nexus merch. And we also have a Patreon, and there's links to both down in the description below. And, you know, both help out immensely with running the channel. So thank you for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>